Linux versus Windows is an age-old battle of the operating systems. It has caused many flame wars, disagreements, and almost fanatical behavior on internet forums and blogs for what seems like forever. I think it is important to stress that this session will discuss not which OS is best because it is impossible to come to that conclusion and subjective opinion will never be correct to anyone who is in that person holding the belief. There are also some age-old cliches about these respective systems that has served no one till date. Hi all, I'm Upasana from Edureka and what follows hopefully will be a fair review or comparison on the two OSs that we are going to talk about today. Before we begin, let's discuss the agenda for today. We're going to start out with a little introduction to both of our competitors. We're going to talk about what is Linux, what is Windows, where did they come from, why do we need them, and what are their specialities, features. Then we're going to discuss a little bit about the history of these OSs. Then we are going to go to the main part of the session, which is Linux versus Windows, a toe to toe comparison of these two OSs. Then we are going to discuss the distributions, talk a little bit about the latest distributions. Finally, I'm going to discuss which operating system is most suitable for which user, and then I'm going to conclude the session. Also, kindly take up this time to go ahead and hit the subscribe button to never miss an update from Edureka YouTube channel. So, without much ado, let's get started. So, what is Linux? Now, Linux is a free and open source operating system based on Unix standards. It provides programming interface as well as a user interface compatible with the Unix based systems and provides largely a variety of applications. A Linux system also contains many separately developed elements resulting in Unix system which is fully compatible and free from proprietary code. The traditional monolithic kernel is employed in the Linux kernel for performance purposes, but its modular feature shows most drivers to dynamically load and unload at runtime. Linux protects, possesses, and is a multi-user system. Inter-process communication is supported by both of the mechanisms such as message queue, shared memory, and semaphore. An abstract layer is used in Linux to govern the different file systems, but to the users, the file system looks like a hierarchical directory tree. It also supports networked, device-oriented, and virtual file systems, and this storage is accessed through a page cache, which is unified with the virtual memory systems. Now, to minimize the duplication of shared data amongst various processes, the memory management system uses page sharing and copy on write. Now, Linux is an open source operating system based on Unix, created in 1991. It is a software with sites underneath all of the other software on a computer. Users can modify existing code and create distributions from it as it is an open source operating system. Now, this also comes with a graphical interface with some necessary softwares which are used on a daily basis and is mostly used as a server. As most of the web pages over the internet are generated from Linux servers and also used in desktop computers, mobile devices, gaming consoles, digital storing devices, ebook readers, cameras, video recorders, so on and so forth. Now let's go ahead and look at our second competitor for today. So we have Windows. Windows is a licensed operating system which has the source code as inaccessible. It is designed for individuals with a perspective of having no computer programming knowledge and for business and other commercial users. It is very simple and straightforward to use. It is extensible, portable, and assists multiple operating environments, symmetric multiprocessing, and client server computing. It offers integrated caching, virtual memory, and preemptive scheduling. Now, Windows 10 is the latest release of Microsoft Windows operating system. Its default user interface is a Windows shell and it uses hybrid kernel in the older versions and the micro kernel in the newer version. Now, Windows is a series of operating systems developed by Microsoft for personal computers, desktop devices, and a few mobile phones. Each operating system comes with a graphical user interface with the desktop, which allows a user to view all files, videos, etc. The first version of the OS was released in 85 
which is a simple GUI an extension of the disk operating system or MS DOS and the major release as of my point of view was in 1995 the consumer release which integrated Windows and DOS with built-in internet support now the latest Windows OS version is the Windows 10 which is currently ruling the market next let's look at a little bit of history on the two now the first version of Windows known as Windows 1.0 was revealed in 1985 following the formation of Microsoft. It was based upon the MS DOS core and at that time the most widely used program manager for running applications. Following the initial launch, the new versions of Windows were quickly rolled out, including the first major update in 1987, quickly followed by Windows 3 in the same year. The journey of the evolution happened quickly and in 1995, perhaps the most widely used version yet, Windows 95 was born. Don't you all remember those days? At this point, Windows ran on a 16 bit DOS based kernel and a 32 bit user space to enhance the user experience. Can you think of this? 32 bits of user space. We have more than that in our cell phones now. But getting back to the point, Windows hasn't changed a lot in terms of core architecture since 95. And although the vast amounts of features have been added, Onto the address of modern computing, many of the elements we recognize today were ever present. For example, the start menu, the taskbar, and the Windows Explorer, which is now called as the File Explorer, all presented themselves in Windows 98. Linux was launched much later than Windows in 1991. It was created by this Finnish engineering student, Linus Torvalds, who wanted to create a free operating system kernel that anybody could use. Although it still was regarded as a very bare bones operating system without a graphical interface like Windows, it nevertheless grew considerably within just a few years. With a few lines of source code in its original release to where it stands today, containing more than 23.3 million lines of source code, Linux was first distributed under the GNU General Public License in 1992. With that, let's move on to Linux versus Windows. This might be the reason most of you are still hooked on to this session. So let's start up with users. Now, there are three types of users in Linux. You have regular, administrative, and service. Now, a regular user account is created for you when you install Ubuntu on the system. All your files, folders are stored in slash home slash, which is your home directory. And as a regular user, you do not have access to directories of other users. Next, you have the root user or the administrative user. Other than your regular account, another user account is called root and it is created at the time of installation. The root account is a super user account who can access restricted files, install software, and have administrative privileges. Hence the name administrative user. Whenever you want to install software, make changes to the system files, or perform any administrative task on Linux, you need to log in as a root user. Otherwise, for general tasks like playing music and browsing the internet, you can use your regular account. And the third and final account is the service user. Linux is a widely used as a server operating system and services such as Apache, Squid, Email, etc. have their own individual service accounts. Having a service account increases the security of your computer. Now, Linux can allow or deny access to various resources depending on the service. Now, in Windows, there are four types of user accounts. You have your administrative, standard, child, and guest account. Next, let's go ahead and look at usage. Now, according to the market research data of the September of 2007, 92% of the world's PCs had Windows running, while only about a percent of PC users use Linux. The home users, multimedia enthusiasts, mainly used Windows, whereas for serious use, server application corporation servers were running on Linux. Irrespective of the GUI, many users found it difficult to use Linux as compared to Windows, obviously due to the command line interface. And so the appeal of Linux was very limited to common people. Also, for licensing agreement with Microsoft, various PC vendors are entitled to bundle Windows OS with their PC. And for this, Windows gained the initial market popularity over Linux. Though these days, many PC vendors such as Dell and HP 
started to give Linux as a pre-installed OS to cut the cost of their PC system. According to the latest IDC report, Windows Server Market is gaining popularity over Linux-based server. The annual rate at which Linux is growing in the x86 server space has fallen from around 53% to 45% globally. The main reason is that while Linux servers are looking for high performance computing and web serving, Windows is apparently adopted on a much broader basis. Next, let's move ahead and look at what the kernels are like. Now, Linux uses a monolithic kernel which consumes more running space, whereas Windows uses the microkernel as of the latest versions which take less space, but the system running efficiency is lower than Linux. Next, let's look at file systems. In the Microsoft Windows, files are stored in folders on different data drives like CDE. But in Linux, files are ordered in a tree-like structure starting with a root directory. Now, this root directory can be considered as the start of a file system and it further branches out various subdirectories. Now, the root is denoted with a forward slash and a general tree-like system on your Unix may look like something like this on your screen. In Linux and Unix, everything is a file. Directories are files, files are files, and devices like printer, mouse, keyboards are also files. Which is not the case in your Microsoft Windows. At number 5, we have security. Every Windows user has faced security and stability issues. Since Windows is the most widely consumed OS, hackers, spammers all target Windows very frequently. Consumer versions of Windows were originally designed for ease of use of a single user PC without a network connection and did not have the security features built in. Now, Microsoft releases security patches through its Windows update service approximately once a month, although critical updates are made available at shorter intervals when necessary. Many a times, users of Windows OS face the blue screen of death caused by the failure of the system to respond and eventually the user has to manually restart the PC. This is super frustrating and it also may cause you to lose valuable data. On the other hand, Linux is a very stable OS and is more secure than Windows. As Linux is community driven, developed through people collaboration and monitored constantly by the developers from every corner of the world, any new problem raised can be solved within just a few hours and the necessary patch will be ready at the same time. Also, Linux is based on Unix architecture, which is a multi-user OS. So, it is much more stable than a single-user OS such as Windows. Next, let's look at compatibility of the two. Here, Windows shoots and scores. Here is where the Redmond offering wipes the floor with Linux. Despite recent improvements in software being ported or developed to Linux, Windows is still the king. Users of Windows can be certain that most softwares will work and even obscure outdated software will continue to work even when it is abandoned by developers. Windows has good legacy support, plain and simple. I know of commercial software that still relies on technologies like Silverlight, ActiveX and Internet Explorer 11. Linux on the other hand, can struggle with the basics that Windows users take for granted. Adobe Flash Player is something else that is missing on Linux for a really long time. And even when it did appear with repositories, it was not as actively developed as Windows versions. With regard to file systems, Linux can also read and write to NTFS and FAT formatted devices and USB sticks, whereas Windows will have no idea what extension 4 is. At number 7, we have ease of use. Now, this is a tough one to call. Linux over the recent years has made huge leaps in usability. Distributions like Linux Mint have made installation and setup pretty simple. Even non-technical users can install and use software and do normal day-to-day -day activities like web browsing, answering emails, playing music and watching videos. Windows, due to high market proliferation, is the default OS of many devices. Now think of it, people like you and me, we grew up on Windows, right? Buy a new laptop or a PC, there is a very high chance that it comes with Windows installed. Users are used to clicking the toolbar, opening their favorite programs, which makes it good for power and non-power users. Next, we have privacy. 
Linux users have a private operating system that does not spy on them and does not phone home with any degree of seriousness. Period. Choosing Linux means the system is yours and yours alone. Add to the mix that most Linux systems come with an option of a built in military grade encryption and users can be sure that the device theft poses no real problem to their own data. As a contrast, increasingly over the last few years, Windows has gotten more advert driven. Users are given the choice to opt out and there are some clever registry hacks that can help, but advertising is now a part of Redmond's plan. Windows can also watch what users do, offering syncing to Microsoft OneDrive service or to learn behavior to make Cortana the Microsoft personal assistant better. Personally, I do not favor these kind of intrusive tools, but some users do like these features like who wouldn't want a personal assistant in your laptop. You already have your Google assistant and your series, right? Next you have source code. Now this all of you might know Linux is open source whereas Windows is commercial. So users have access to the source code of Linux and can alter the code as per user need whereas Windows users do not have any access to their source code. Now this has its own advantages in Linux like bugs in OS will fix at a rapid pace and disadvantages like developers may take advantage of any weakness in the OS if they are found. In Windows every user would not have access to the source code only members of a selected and qualified group will have access to it. Next you have license. Now the Linux kernel and the GNU utilities and libraries which accompany it in most distributions are entirely free and open source. You can download and install GNU Linux without any purchase. Some companies offer paid support for their Linux distributions, but the underlying software is still free to download and install. A funny folklore here is that Linus Torvalds actually was an introvert and did not want companies to communicate with him through email. He did not want to be spammed by all these big companies running the industry to buy the source code to his kernel. So basically what he did was he made it open source for everybody to access. Funny isn't it? Now on the other hand you have Microsoft Windows which usually costs between 99 to 199 US dollars for each licensed copy. Now Windows 10 was originally being offered as a free upgrade to current owners of Windows 7 or 8.1 if they upgraded before the 29th of July 2016, but that offer is no longer available. Then you have reliability. Now Windows as we know it becomes sluggish day after day. You will want to reinstall Windows after a while when you encounter crashes or slowdowns on your system. If you're using Linux, you will not have to worry about reinstalling it just to experience a faster smoother system. Linux helps your system run smooth for a longer period of time. In fact, much much longer in my experience. Also with Windows you will have to adapt to a habit where you keep on rebooting the system for just about everything. If you just install software reboot. If you recently uninstall software reboot. If you just install a Windows update reboot and if the system seems to slow down you guessed it reboot. However, in the case of Linux, you will not have to reboot for the situations previously mentioned. You can comfortably continue with your work and Linux will not bother you. Another fact that proves Linux to be a reliable source are the web servers. You could observe that most of the internet giants like Google and Facebook run on Linux. Even most of all the supercomputers run on Linux. So why isn't Windows preferred over Linux? It is because Linux is far more reliable than Windows. Period. No arguments. Finally, we have support. Now, Windows has a support which is easily accessible online forums or websites, and it has paid support as well. In a Linux system, you need not hire an expert to solve a problem. You just need to search for a familiar thread on the web for a solution or post a thread to let others know of the problem. Within minutes of posting the thread, on any Linux forum, you may expect a reply along with a detailed solution which would finally help resolve your problem at no cost. It's like Linux has its own Stack Overflow community, doesn't it? 
Now there are a lot of active Linux users who are always ready to respond to a relevant thread that might have created. The number of community users active on such forums is more than the number of active members on any Windows focused forum any day. However, the community response might be depending on the Linux distribution being used. With that, I come to the end of my Linux versus Windows segment. The last category is distributions. Now, before we begin, I need to address one of the more confusing aspects to the Linux platform. While Windows has maintained a fairly standard version structure with updates and versions split into tiers, Linux is far more complex. Originally designed by the Finnish student Linus Torvalds, the Linux kernel today underpins all Linux OS's. However, as it remains open source, the system can be tweaked and modified by anyone for their own purposes. What we have as a result are hundreds of bespoke Linux based operating systems known as distributions or distros. This makes it incredibly difficult to choose between them. Far more complicated than simply picking Windows 7, Windows 8, or Windows 10. Given the nature of open source software, these distros can vary wildly in functionality and sophistication, and many are constantly evolving. The choice can seem overwhelming, and particularly the differences between them aren't always immediately obvious. On the other hand, this also has its own benefits. The variety of different Linux distros is so great that you can all find something that suits your particular taste. Do you prefer a Mac OS style interface? You're in luck. Elementary OS is a Linux distro built to mirror the look and feel of an Apple interface. Similarly, if you yearn for the days of Windows XP, you can bring that back with a Q4 OS, which darkens back to the Microsoft's fan favorite. Now, there are more specialized Linux flavors, such as distros designed to give ancient low powered computers a new lease of life, or super secure distros that can be booted from a USB drive to keep you safe when using an unfamiliar PC. Naturally, there are also numerous Linux versions for running servers and enterprise grade applications. For those who are new to Linux, I'd like to recommend Ubuntu as a great starting point. It is very user friendly even compared to Windows while still being versatile and feature rich enough to satisfy experienced techies. It is the closest thing Linux has to a default distro Although we would urge everyone to come and explore various distribution options available and find out what is your favorite. Next, let's look at which OS is most suitable for you. Now, this one depends on what you need to do. Both Linux and Windows are rich in multimedia applications, though setting up sound and video options in the older versions of Linux can be difficult for some users. The main advantage of Linux is that most of the multimedia applications are freely available. While in the case of Windows, users might have to pay a hefty amount to get the software, although many open source free versions are often available. Moreover, if anybody buys a copy of Windows on a CD ROM, they do not get any application software with it, other than the bundled Microsoft software. But if the same person buys a copy of a Linux, it typically comes with a lot of free application software, such as OpenOffice, a complete free office suite including spreadsheets, presentation, so on and so forth. A new computer with Windows pre-installed may have additional application software, but that is totally up to the PC vendor. But each Linux distro comes with multiple flavors. The more expensive versions come up with more application software. If you're a gamer and need 100% compatibility with a particular software or want a user-friendly system, hands down, Windows wins. Steam, amongst other clients and options, provides a huge number of games for both AAA publishers and small indie developers. While Steam for Linux now allows you to install Windows games, it is still in beta phase. And not all Windows games will work. It can be a little frustrating for Linux users like myself. And no doubt, the situation will change in the future. But as of now, in 2019, many Linux users miss out on the top games with their choice of OS. The graphics card vendors also tend to support Windows platforms rather than Linux. They provide timely updates and new features that don't always filter to other OSs. If you're an advocate of open source software or if your device simply is too old or lower spec 
to run Windows or just plain tired of all the forced updates and reboots in Windows, then Linux is a great option. Linux supports almost all major programming languages Python, C, C, Java, Perl, Ruby, etc. It offers a vast range of applications useful for programming purposes too. Now, the Linux terminal is superior to use over Windows command line for developers. You would find many libraries developed natively for Linux also. A lot of programmers point out that the package manager on Linux helps them get things done easily. Interestingly, the ability of bash scripting is one of the most compelling reasons why programmers prefer Linux OS. Linux also brings in native support for secure shell, which would help you manage your servers quickly. You could include things like apt-get commands, which further makes Linux one of the most popular choices for programmers. I hope this has been a more objective look on both systems, showing situations where each has its benefits and disadvantages. I haven't discussed every difference or area because there are simply too many. I use Windows and Linux both in equal measure based on what I need to do, either by dual boot or virtual box. So, do you like Windows or do you like Linux? This platform is open for arguments. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!